Hey guys, it's Kai. From digital pets to trading cards, here are 11 childhood toys now worth a fortune. Number 11, Original Game Boy. Released in Japan in 1989, the Game Boy was designed by Nintendo engineer Gunpei Yokoi, or however you say his name, who previously worked on the company's Game & Watch handheld LCD games. The handheld console cost $97, which is nothing compared to modern consoles, and it sold 300,000 units in two weeks. That was just a mere prelude to its later international success. To this day, the gray brick remains in the hearts of game lovers everywhere. Today, an original Game Boy can fetch $700. The interest in original Game Boys spiked the same time interest in Pokemon Go spiked. Nintendo has often been associated with the Pokemon video game. However, Nintendo is getting the last laugh. Ha! Pokemon Go isn't even owned by Nintendo, but by another company. Number 10, 1970 Star Wars action figures. Since Star Wars is a current phenomenon, it's easy to forget that it all started in the 1970s and it was huge even then. For several months after the film's debut, toy companies made limited Star Wars merchandise available. One company responded to the sudden demand for toys by selling box vouchers in its Empty Box Christmas 1977 campaign. Television commercials told parents and children that vouchers within Star Wars' Early Bird Certificate Package could be redeemed for toys between February 1st and June 1st of 1978. In 2015, a collector auctioned off his memorabilia through Sotheby. One of his Star Wars action figures sold for $25,000, though the news report doesn't say which figure it was. A Luke Skywalker figure with telescoping lightsaber or Han Solo with his blaster could easily go for 1000 However, Boba Fett, that mysterious bounty hunter who only appeared as a supporting character, can sell for twice as much. The most valuable action figure isn't who you'd expect though. A vinyl cape Jawa, I don't know what that is, but you do because you're a fan, can cost $18,000 or more. This is due to only a few of them being made. Number 9, Beanie Babies. TY started selling Beanie Babies in 1993. Sales were doing all right, but nothing phenomenal. However, a group of friends in Chicago began trading them and the media caught wind of it. The New York Times reported on articles and TV segments about parents trading a $5 toy for thousands of dollars. One of the early traders, Peggy Gallagher, bought a box of stuffed animals in Germany for $2,000, but they were $300,000 in the US. What really kicked Beanie Baby Mania in high gear, however, was the rise of eBay. In the early 90s, 10% of eBay sales involved Beanie Babies. The craze turned TY into the first billion dollar plush company. First generation Beanie Babies are worth the most money, but a princess bear, created in the honor of Princess Diana, sold in the UK for $90,000. If you have a Beanie Baby, keep one thing in mind. If the heart shape tagged in the air is removed, the toy loses its value by 50%. Number eight, Garbage Pail Kids. When Cabbage Patch Kids came into the scene in the 1980s, the Topps company wanted to get a license to depict Cabbage Patch Kids on trading cards. However, they weren't able to obtain a license cheaply and decided instead to make a parody, and the Garbage Pail Kids was born. The idea was to create something not as benign as the Cabbage Patch Kids and much more provocative. Some of these gross-looking cards sell at a high price on eBay. One atom bomb card sold on the auction site for $4,250. Can you believe that? These international cards are rare, especially the early test cards. For collectors, the most sought-after set are the Japanese JPK cards called Bumikimi-kun. I don't speak Japanese, so I don't know. Four single cards with their wrapper are sold for over a million dollars on eBay in February 2012. Apparently, the key is to have the wrapper in excellent condition. Misprints and cards with mistakes are also highly sought. Number seven, Pez dispensers. Pez was originally invented in Austria in 1927, but the company's only factory headquarters are located in Orange, Connecticut. The Haas family owned the company and it really is a family business. They descended from the Pez candy inventor, Edward Haas III. He invented it in a peppermint flavor to encourage his fellow Austrians to quit smoking. 
The campaign was actually very successful, and when it came to America, it was for the same purpose. However, it didn't have the same effect, but the candy still remained very popular. All the Pez distributed worldwide comes from one factory in Orange. It produces 12 million tables every day and uses 50,000 pounds of sugar to do it. The highest selling Pez dispenser is the Santa Claus, created in 1955. The original 1955 dispenser is also the most valuable because of its rarity. According to a list on eBay, other valuable Pez dispensers include the 1982 World's Fair promotional dispenser, the locking cap dispenser from the 1940s, and the Pez gun from the 1960s and 70s. Number 6. Hot Wheels Hot Wheels debuted in 1968 and people began collecting them even then. Many of the designers of the toys also designed cars, which lent authenticity not normally seen on toy cars. One designer, Larry Wood, worked at Ford before coming to Mattel. Another designer named Jack Ryan was an instrumental in the development of Hawk and Sparrow missiles and was also behind the fantastic bearings used in Hot Wheels cars. Another interesting bit of trivia, all of the Hot Wheels original 16 designs were based on actual customized cars. Today, there are more Hot Wheels cars than actual cars. With a history like this, it's not surprising that some of these tiny cars fetch a pretty price when sold at an auction. The 1971 Purple Olds 442 is rare and values anywhere between $1,400 and $2,000. The 1968 white enamel Camaro is, according to legend, the first Hot Wheels ever produced and is worth $2,500. However, nothing beats a Hot Wheels that appeared on an episode of History Channel's Pawn Stars. A pink Volkswagen 1969 rear load beach bomb was brought into the Las Vegas pawn shop to be valued. It was quickly discovered that it was not really a toy, but a prototype. Only two of these have ever been made. The value? A mind-numbing $100,000, which by the way, is more than a Porsche 911 Carrera. Number 5. Fisher Price's Push Cart Pete Your first toy probably came from Fisher Price. Blocks, xylophones, and toy phones are only examples of some of the toys this company placed in our childhood toy chest. Helene Shell Irving Price and Herman Fisher established the Fisher Price Company in 1930. The founders combined two of their three last names to create the iconic company name. Originally, the toys were made of steel and pine. I think that's weird. With a history like theirs, it's not surprising if their vintage toys sell at a high price. One example is Pushcart Pete. This toy debuted in 1936 and sold for only 50 cents. In auctions, it's listed as ultra rare, and in December 2009, a Pushcart Pete was sold for $8,000, while in 2007, another sold for $12,500. The toy is all wood, and the head bobs up and down as it's being pushed. Number four, American Girl Dolls. First introduced in 1986 by The Pleasant Company, these dolls have become immensely popular over the years and have a high collectible value. The original three girls were Samantha, Kristen, and Molly, and stood 18 inches tall. Like the dolls today, they each had elaborate backstories told in detailed books. The American Girl collection was originally exclusively available only through mail order catalogs. Over the next several years, five more historical dolls and their stories were added for a total of eight dolls whose lives spanned periods in U.S. history from 1764 to 1944. In 1997, the dolls were made available for order on the internet, and the following year, Mattel acquired the Pleasant Company, and since then, the popularity of the dolls has grown. The five most expensive American Girl dolls include the original three and Felicity and Kainani. Felicity was retired in 2011, but her model was also made before the Pleasant Company was acquired in 1997. Kinani was a limited edition in 2011 and therefore pretty rare. Kinani can sell for $2,500 while the other four sell between $1 and $35,000. Number 3. Vintage Atari Cartridges Founded in 1972, Atari is famous for bringing us Pong, which was actually meant as a test game. Pong originally sold for $1,095 and was sold through distributors. However, Atari grew tired of the exclusive deals with distributors, and they created their own competitor, Key Games, which sold knockoffs, but with unique enhancements. It was in 1974 that Key Games introduced Tank, 
the first coin-op game to contain ROM-based code in the graphics. Tank became the basis for Atari Combat. Without Atari, we wouldn't have the video game craze of today and its nostalgic hallmark, hallmark for many people. It's not that surprising, then, that the vintage Atari cartridges are considered very valuable. A copy of Gamma Attack can go between 20,000 and 50,000. Birthday Mania comes in just under that at 35,000. Both of these games are played on Atari 2600, which is considered the grandfather of home video game systems. Number two, the original Transformers action figures. In 1984, Hasbro launched the Transformers on an unsuspecting public. The idea was simple, miniature cars, planes, and other objects which can turn into action figures. Despite the simplicity, or maybe because of it, Transformers is a franchise that exists 30 years later and has spawned several full-length movies by Michael Bay. What's even more interesting is that Hasbro owes the success in part to Ronald Reagan. Before 1984, regulation prevented the promotion of any product within the body of a television show. Ronald Reagan deregulated children's television as part of a wider bid to boost the American economy. Hasbro then invented a toy around which a television show could revolve. The rest, as cliche goes, is history. Today, a vintage Transformers toy still in its package can sell from a few hundred to 2,500. Number one, Tamagotchi. If you grew up in the 1990s, then you probably remember the Tamagotchi. Did any of you guys have one? That little video game that could hang from a keychain? Many kids got bored with the game and forgot to feed their pets, me included, leading to their first digital death. First introduced in 1996 by Bandai, it sold more than 40 million units worldwide and 12 million units in the United States and Canada. The game spurred the virtual pet phenomenon of the 90s and created a brand new toy category. Akimata, a Bandai employee who wanted a pet that worked with her busy lifestyle and small apartment, created the game. Today, a Tamagotchi still in its packaging can sell close to $2,000. Most, though, average about $300. That's amazing since most Tamagotchis originally sold for less than 20 bucks. Thanks for watching! If you have any of these toys, be sure to hold on to them. And remember, subscribe and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>